This video is brought to you by Scopic.com. Get yours now. Hey guys, welcome back. This is Phil from the and today we're going to take a look at the Xiaomi Redmi Pro. Of course, this is the one because it doesn't say Samsung on top, although it looks identical. As you can see, the front design is mainly borrowed from the Galaxy Note 4, although that's exactly, well, a lot of phones look like. And the rear apparently looks like a variation from the Redmi Note 3 or the variant from the HTC One M8. I don't know, it's um, HTC is design is borrowed by a lot of companies, borrowed, copied, whatever. And uh, HTC themselves is borrowing design from the iPhone, which their design is borrowed from the HTC. I don't know, it's, it's a mess out there. All right, so let's take a look. Firstly, the biggest feature of the Redmi Pro is of course the dual camera or the stereo camera as they might as well put it. And the bottom camera takes the data of the depth of field of the photo that you're taking and it's in the position where Redmi Note 3 used to have their fingerprint reader. And by the fact that I never complain about the position of the fingerprint reader on the Redmi Note 3, it's exactly where your finger lies to be. And that means the Redmi Pro also has your index finger lying right there when you're using it. So you'll have to face a lot of smudges from your fingerprint on your bottom camera. Thankfully enough, the bottom camera isn't used unless you want the stereo camera or the depth of field function, but that is the main pitch of the phone. So I guess that's a little problem. There is a reason why HTC put up their sub camera on top of the main one, not at the bottom. Now, the camera itself is interesting and um, you can change the depth of field while you're taking the photo or even after you took the photo. This is also the technology enabled by the software in the Samsung's LGs or the Sony's. And um, of course, this has a dedicated sensor, so it does it a little better but you can still see the outlines or miscalculated uh, bezels around the item that you wanted to focus on and it's not exactly perfect yet. The technology isn't quite still there. The low lighting photo gets better with the HHT on, but lack of OIS makes it easy to be very shaky. And the selfie cam is another thing that is very shaky often. So you shouldn't be expecting a super stabilized selfie in low lighting condition. This isn't exactly one of those. But overall, it's not exactly the best camera, but it's not the worst either. It's quite acceptable for the price range. Now, this is also the first Redmi phone to have an AMOLED panel. They, they call it the OLED, but the older panels on the mobile phones are AMOLED anyway. The color saturation is not exactly what I want it to look like, and you can change the colors and contrast here. There's automatic, increase, and standard. You can only change the temperature in automatic, not on increased or standard mode, and there is only warm, standard, and cool, so you can't have somewhere in between standard and cool. It's got a pantile layout. It's not exactly the RGB layout layout that you want it to look like. And although it's got a full HD resolution, this layout makes it very hard for small letters, especially Asian scripts, to be seen in a smaller font size. Moving on to software, it's got a MIUI 8, and if you get a Chinese version of the phone, you'll be getting English, traditional Chinese, and simplified Chinese, and Tibetan. Now, that's a very new thing. Who knows why? Who knows why? Of course, it's quite apparent. It's got a few interesting functions, including the second space. Now, second space is just like Knox container of Samsung, but it works in a different way. But you can make the second virtualized part of the phone so you can install separate apps here. You can store separate data there. You can have separate contact and accounts in there. It's very useful, so you can just swap into the second space. It takes a bit of a time, but you can have a second virtual phone within your phone. And also when you want to go back to the original space, you have to verify yourself by your fingerprint or or the password. There is also a similar function called the dual apps, which is going to duplicate the app that you have. So you can have two Facebook, uh, two WhatsApp, so you can manage two accounts on the apps that do not support the multiple accounts. In addition, there is an app lock, so you can separately set password or the fingerprint lock to the app. And when you have your music playing, you can check out the progress on the multitasking panel, although that multitasking panel lags a bit. And sadly, this is not the only part where it lags. So when you go to settings or any kind of transition animation, really, you can see that the animation is not really smooth. I, I would say that this is like an ice cream sandwich kind of animation still. This is one of my biggest complaints about the MIUI system overall. And you can swap the button layout. This is multitasking and this is back. This is not exactly the way I want it to be. And the notification bar is still going to show the app's original icon only. And the MIUI apps are still somewhat based in 2009, 2010. So when you have it on a third party launcher like this one, some of the apps do not even have an icon. Take a look at this calculator here or updater that doesn't have an icon or 
take a look at the camera that is still on the ice cream sandwich icon. Talking about call quality, it's got a 4G and 3G dual SIM, so you can have your LTE connection and 3G call at the same time. Although it's not going to notify the other caller when you're busy on one line, so the other caller might be thinking that you're avoiding their phone call, so you'll have to take care of that. There are two power settings on this guy. One is balance and the other is performance. And of course, the performance mode generates heat, and there is a warning there that you cannot take away and it does heat up a lot so i suggest you use it as a balanced mode since the performance doesn't really vary that much on an everyday task and very interestingly the battery lasts about the same for either mode at four and a half hours to five hours and although it doesn't come with the quick charge capability the charging is mostly done within two hours hour and 40 minutes two hours so it's not exactly a bigot to be worried about overall i should say that i was quite happy with the redmi pro um although this main feature the stereo camera was not exactly helpful or interesting or the overall photo quality wasn't that impressive. The Redmi Pro as a phone is quite good for its price. Its build quality is very good, it's solid, and the battery lasts pretty long and the performance isn't too bad. It doesn't generate too much heat. So yeah, if you were thinking about an upgrade from a say Redmi Note 3 or other cheaper devices, this would be a great choice if you do not want to spend too much on your phone, especially when you want a good build quality at a cheaper price. But if I may give you a little tip, the dual camera isn't really worth it. If you want it for the depth of field function, no, don't. That's pretty much it. It's an okay phone, except for its camera. I know it's an irony, but um, that's how things are. All right, then, we hope it helped, and we'll see you guys later. Until then, you can meet us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Google+, and we'll see you definitely in other reviews. Ciao.